what you fainted to say football. Do, 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 Cassidy Quinn. Hey guys, it's me, Cassidy Quinn. We are officially in the middle of football season. But today, we are going to talk more specifically about fantasy football. This is my second year doing fantasy football, and it's pretty fun. Last year, I kind of failed miserably. I didn't come in last place in my league, but I think I was pretty far down the list. I was just a rookie. Beginner's luck was not a thing that happened to me. So this year, I was determined. Go big or go home. Or stay home and watch football and go big. Is that an option? But this year, since I'm committing more thought and time to it, I'm realizing that fantasy football is a very weird thing. Let me explain. My team's quarterback is Peyton Manning. I am definitely not a Broncos fan. Do you remember the Super Bowl last season? However, last year I had Russell Wilson as my quarterback and he just didn't get me enough points. I love you, Russell. You're great. You're even doing a campaign against domestic violence. You're amazing. You're just not the best. So this year I picked Peyton Manning and when I picked him for my team, I felt very weird inside. It just didn't feel right to be picking Peyton Manning, who I'm normally rooting against, knowing that I would have to be rooting for him on my team all season. And that, I think, is the weirdest thing about fantasy football. You're rooting for the people that you would never root for normally, and then you're rooting against some of the people on your own team. For example, a couple of weeks ago, the person I was playing against in my league had Marshawn Lynch beast mode on their team. That week, while I was rooting for the Seahawks to win, I was rooting for Marshawn Lynch to have a bad game. It was very awkward, but it had to be done. And I'm pretty sure he had a good game and I lost that week. But my backup quarterback on my team is Russell Wilson. So I've still got the Seahawks in there, don't worry. Another Seahawk I have on my team is Steven Hauschka, the Seahawks kicker. So besides just rooting as a Seahawks fan, I'm also rooting for the Seahawks to get a lot of touchdowns so he can get his kicks in. You know what I'm saying? I also have the 49ers defense. If you are a Seahawks fan, you're even more anti-49ers than you are anti-Broncos. So for the last few weeks, I've been rooting for or the 49ers, or really basically just rooting against whatever team they're playing so that their defense does well. Because I think that's how it works. There's also a bunch of people on my fantasy team who normally I wouldn't care about their teams at all and probably wouldn't watch the games. So that's one good thing about fantasy football is that it makes me actually watch games that I would normally not watch. And if I'm not watching the game, I'm just sitting on my phone, refreshing, refreshing, refreshing to see how the player is doing. And that part is fun to me in kind of a weird, nerdy way. Fantasy football is like math, except not predictable in the end. Each week during the fantasy football season, you can look at your roster and it will tell you how many points each player is projected to have for that week. So you can add it up and the total is hypothetically what you'll have at the end of the week. So I like that part because I really kind of like math. I know that's weird, especially because in my life, I do nothing relating to math. But when I was in middle school and high school, I loved me some algebra. That was fun. So I like that part of fantasy football, that you can trade in one of your players and get a new player, and it will add to your projected total for the week. However, and this is a big however, obviously football is not predictable. You can have the best team in the world going into the Super Bowl, but you can't 100% know that you're going to win unless your team is the Seahawks. So while Yahoo Sports might say that your player is projected to get 14.6 points this week, they might get 2.6 points instead. And that's what happened with Michael Crabtree this week, which I really didn't appreciate. Crabtree? Now I'm a crab tree. So you can do all of this math, but you don't know how it's actually gonna work out in the end, which makes it horrible and fun at the same time. It's madness. But this whole process kind of makes the fantasy football thing become a bit of an obsession. You have to check every week or multiple times a week to make sure that you have your lineup. So during the games, I'm not only watching the game on TV, I'm also constantly hitting refresh and refresh and refresh on the fantasy football app, hoping to get more points. And you can't look away. It's like I finally understand what people that have gambling problems deal with. Except joining my fantasy football league only costs $20. So it's not much of a problem if I lose, when I lose. 
You never know. Don't sleep on me. And then there are injuries, which are obviously totally unpredictable. Now, I like to think of myself as a nice person, so normally when someone gets injured, I feel bad for them and hope they can walk off the field and be okay. Unless they're playing against the Seahawks. But then you throw the whole fantasy thing into the mix, and if someone gets injured, that could totally ruin your entire week. A whole week. It's bad. For example, last weekend, Michael Crabtree hurt his foot in the middle of the game. Now my team was already down a few points for the week, so I started freaking out. And when I freak out, I tweet about it. So I started tweeting, of course, including Crabtree's Twitter handle, saying, oh my god, you can't be injured, this is horrible. I'm gonna lose all because of you. This is horrible. And really, it wasn't his fault. He got injured and that sucks for him, so I should be feeling for him instead of Smack talking him, but that's what you do. You're in the moment. You know now after the fact I feel kind of bad But it's probably not gonna stop me from doing it again as a team manager You also start to come up with a strategy for example My crazy thing is that I don't want to change my lineup until Thursday morning or even Thursday afternoon but not too late or else I will forget it. That's why I have a calendar reminder set up in my Gmail. I don't want to change it too early because I want to make the person I'm playing against think that I don't notice half of my players are on a bye week and the other half are injured. Then they don't change their lineup because they think I'm not paying attention and they're already going to win anyway. But then in the last second, I swoop in and then I win. At least that's the hope. I don't know if this strategy is really working. So overall, fantasy football just takes a lot more time, effort, energy, everything than you, or at least I, ever thought it would. But it's fun. Have you guys ever played fantasy football? If you have a team this year, let me know who is on it in the comments below or what you think of my team. And if you do or ever have had a fantasy team, do you get as obsessed as I do and get into the math and the all of that and every week usually like Wednesdays and Thursdays I'm always tweeting out asking for advice because sometimes I need help like last week both Russell Wilson and Peyton Manning were on a bye week so I needed a new quarterback and everybody on social media helped me choose Alex Smith and he single-handedly won my week so bravo social media for always being amazing you know I love you here's to success and a Super Bowl win for my fantasy team and the Seahawks. And I'll see you next week. Bye. That none of be that none of be none of buddy. Or someone would get or one of my players would get injured. Why is it so hard to say? That half of my players are on a bye week. Bye week. What am I saying? Ever start Russell Wilson this season unless that was loud. Why are there so many loud cars outside? Stop overcompensating.